doesn't cover on Thanksgiving, but everybody else does if they're favored at home. If they're now, favored. What, what is going on with the the giant? We got to look at the other side of this game. The Giants looked like they actually went into tank mode by get, getting rid of Jones, starting Tommy DeVito. Now, what the? I mean, what are they going to do with quarterback this week? Are they going to start Luck or DeVito? It looks like Luck Luck is going to start. Uh, when the Giants flew out to Dallas today, this morning on Wednesday, DeVito did not make the flight. Now, they said that he will make a later flight, but the speculation right after that tweet came out was indeed that the uh, that Drew Locke is probably going to get the start uh, for the GM tomorrow against Cooper Rush. When I'm looking at the line and I don't see any movement on right. this, I mean, if Locke <laughs> there, starts. There shouldn't be. When, right. I mean, it, it almost, it almost tells me. better than DeVito. Well, I, I, no, may, I, I definitely agree with that. Maybe not. No, I'll tell you why. I definitely agree with because, that. But I, I'll, I'll it, tell you it, why it, it may not be that way. Because the Giants have a better chance of losing with Locke. They're, they're fighting with Dallas for potentially the number one draft choice. So if the Giants are really trying to lose, start your weaker quarterback against, uh, against the Cowboys. Um, Remember, play, players don't tank. It's coaches no. and management well, that but, put but them in position to tank. It's, it's, and that's what exactly. we're doing here. But but it's obvious when you make the move for Daniel Jones now, no matter how bad he's been playing, he's still better than these guys. Um, absolutely. All oh, right, absolutely. So, no question. So Dallas, you, you mentioned the, uh, the 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 odds against them in this spot, but how about this? They're twenty five and four against the spread in their last twenty nine when they were division favorite of two or more. Twenty five and four. Now, got to preface this though they've only been in this situation once this year and they lost because they played the new york giants earlier this year they were a six-point favorite and they won by five and that was on so the road they're on an zero and one streak but they're still 25 and four in the last 29 as they, they also played. have they also have won a home game this year right no, and how have. many how many of those uh, 29 games were with dak prescott a quarterback probably <laughs> all of them so uh, that obviously is a big deal. Uh, they have also won seven straight against the Giants, covering five of the last seven. And they've covered 13 straight as a favorite of two or more off of a division game when they take on a losing team. All of this, of course, is thanks to the Playbook magazine <laughs> that you can purchase uh, from Mark Lawrence and Playbook experts, playbooksports.com. We'll have a link oh, in the button. description for that. And by the way, the line has moved in favor of Dallas. I don't know what it did uh, uh, after Victor's uh, announcement of, of the quarterback thing this morning, but the game opened two and a half. I saw it get as high as four the other day. Yes, four now. Giants 0-6, straight up ATS last six. Chicago, Detroit, guys, quick thoughts on that. The Bears have lost five straight since the bye. And by the way, if you look at their schedule, it might be one of the toughest last six game schedules at all in the NFL. So they're in a lot of trouble. 10, 22, and 1 against the spread. Their last 33 is a road dog on the Chicago Bears. And they take on a red-hot Lions team. That's won nine straight and covered eight out of nine. What do you think about this one? Is I, 10 points too much to give or no way? Detroit's too hot. you got to take the Lions on Thanksgiving. It, it might be too much to give for the first half. Let me put it that way. <laughs> I said last week, yeah. I thought that line of seven <laughs> was fishy because it seemed way too low. This is a team that in their, uh, what, nine previous wins had averaged winning by like 16, 17 points per game. They won this one by by 18. I ended up making a play on uh, on the Lions anyway, just out of, uh, out of principle. I could see the same thing here. You know, the Bears have been very interesting. They showed signs of promise early. Caleb Williams showed some uh, some some improvement and then they had that bye week that i think followed that washington hail mary loss if i remember correctly they haven't won since and the play has declined both from the team's perspective and from the uh, quarterback's perspective he put a well, actually it's got better the last couple of weeks yeah the, the last OC couple of weeks it has but yeah. i also wonder offensively how much, uh, offensively yeah. Yeah, the how how, much, how deflating that uh, loss to Green Bay was a couple of weeks ago. Because I was also looking at that schedule. It may it may be one of the toughest schedules in NFL history for the last six games going forward. Yeah. Um. Uh, you know, I I may end up playing uh, Detroit in the uh, in yeah. the contest as well as out of pocket this week. Yeah. You either stay away from the game or take Detroit. Especially, well, yeah, especially yeah, remembering I, last year. 
again, it's one of those days where uh, public and Sharps might uh, meet together in regards to this game. I already bet Detroit minus six and a half in the first half. I've already played my Detroit uh, minus 10 in the game. Uh, still considering the Packers laying off the favorite in the Dallas game, but I'm with an agreement with you guys. It's it's one of those uh, games where you, you lay it or don't play it. Now, if you to mention, Greg, you said – you see Dallas four. Where do you see that? Because I'm looking at 11 lines that I play in different places, and every one of them's three, three or three and a half with the with the uh, Giants minus money at three and a half. Well, the four so that I, I don't see four any four that I got was uh, yesterday, I believe, and it was on Draft Sharks, which is not yeah. a much book. Okay. Fours and, were available wonder- yesterday at the Superbook. Yes, for a couple hours. And I, I wonder know, if I that, if the it, movement three, down. Three and a half now, right? and that's the weird thing, Tony. It, there was fours available yesterday, and there's virtually none today. And they've decided that it's probably going to be Drew Locke. What, what does that tell you? It's a weird. That's a weird move. Yeah. That's that's crazy. I'll, I mean, I'll give out my stuff. I, I actually like the over in Chicago, Detroit. Just that uh, Caleb Williams looks more uh, confident uh, I, with Thomas Brown oh, as they OC. And, totally but, agree. But, but, but keep keep in mind you gotta you gotta monitor two things. David Montgomery, legitimately questionable. Yep. You love him in the red zone. Seems like an automatic touchdown inside the five. And uh St. Brown is questionable, but he told everybody he's gonna play. So and the line has come down to nine and a half in uh ten of the eleven places I'm looking at. Yeah, it's definitely down from the opener and, and now single digits everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and totals come down too. So down to 47 and a half, 48. Uh, and, go ahead, go ahead, Tony. Uh, just ra- wrap it up. What I like, uh, Giants Dallas. I actually like player props here. I think Malik Neighbors gets forced by the ball. Wouldn't have mattered if it's DeVito or Locke. He, he obviously chirped about not getting the ball when they were down 30. Right. I think they forced fed him the ball uh, to start the second half. So I think he, he uh, receptions, uh, receiving yards props for him and CD Lamb, 77 catches. Uh, and obviously makes that Dallas offense sputter, but go <laughs> anywhere it's going to go. Lamb will take it. One one thing I you know noticed. this is an unusual situation for Dallas. Normally they have like the twelve and five season, or they're, they're really good in the regular season. I mean they're right now they're pretty bad. They're not going anywhere. This is a very unusual situation, and I know the players. I have some people that are very close to this team. And the players are really pissed that everybody's really down on them, pissed off at them, and they have nothing to look forward to. There's no postseason for them. So you might get a little bit more of an effort from Dallas than you would otherwise. I, I would I agree. I, want, I wanted to go back to that Chicago-Detroit game because I take a look at stats first half of the season versus second half of the season. So in this case, they've played 11 games, so I use games one through six and then games uh, 7 through 11, because uh, that would be once they play 12, it would be 7 through 12. Chicago's defense allowed, in the first half of the season, 292 yards per game. Over the last, f- uh, f- let's see, the last five games, it's up to 395 yards for those games. That's a difference of 103 yards drop-off between the first part of the season and the second part of the season. Conversely, Detroit's defense has actually improved by about 35 yards offensively and defensively. So that Bears defense, which had been holding them in there early, I think that decline, which sometimes isn't that obvious, but the numbers reflect that they've been giving up a lot of yards, and usually that means more big plays. And Detroit's not the team you want to give up a big play to. No. I did it. I did have a good interview with R.J. Ochoa, uh, bloggingtheboys.com, covers the Dallas Cowboys, uh, spoke about a lot of things regarding what's going on in Dallas uh, with Jerry Jones, with their head coach search, uh, with personnel. So uh, we'll have a link in the description for that. Uh, You can catch that again uh, either on the Arlads football uh, channel or uh, at ProLine TV. So check that out. Links again in the description. Uh, and then, um, you know, speaking of Dallas, let's keep this in mind. Bland uh, had been out all week, all year, uh, made his return last week, and that was a big deal at corner. See, we can say what we want about Mike McCarthy and no Dak Prescott, but the, the, the Dallas Cowboys have been a walking wounded this year. So it's kind of hard to really judge them um, completely. So they get they get their corner back. Parsons, of course, has been back for a couple of days. So, uh, I mean, for a couple of weeks. So, uh it's probably not a surprise they actually won a game 
uh, when they have two of the best defenders back, uh, which will be, of course, uh, the same thing on Thursday. The last game, quickly, I don't know if you guys, we talked a little bit about it before, Miami and Green Bay. The weather is going to be a big factor, of course, as we mentioned. Green Bay's won six of the last seven. Miami's won three of the last four. The Packers are only one and eight against the spread at home when they, when they are following a double-digit Straight up uh, division win, and if you think about that uh, that number, they're zero and two in that spot this year. So uh, that's uh, not looking good for the Packers. But it's such a low number at three that you would consider this, Jim. Of course, one of those situations where if you like the Packers, you might as well just take the money line. Well, that I've already done that. Um, <laughs> there you the, go. Uh, the. the yeah, the, 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 you know, if this was not a weather issue, you really have a hard time with this. And these teams are very, very similar. I mean, they're, they're easily a turnover or one mistake here, one thing, one play there could turn it. They're not that dissimilar, but having Miami having to go on the road to a, a cold climate, what they're just not used to, and Packers play in this kind of weather all the time, it just, it, that's, that's why the, the Packers, I mean, I'm looking at three minus 19, three minus 20, three and a half. The Heritage has a three and a half. I mean, the, if anything, this thing's going to go to four. That's where it's leaning. Anyone else before we move on from the from uh, the Thanksgiving Day games? Uh, there, there's a prop play I like a lot. In addition to, uh, I agree with Jim, uh, as far as the Packers go and the Dolphins struggles in cold weather. But uh, a guy who's been balling lately is I'm playing Jonu Smith's over 42 yards receiving for the Dolphins. Green Bay ranks bottom five in DVOA against tight ends and against short passes. And they've only faced like three top 20 fantasy tight ends all season long. But they've allowed 42 or more receiving yards in over half their games to tight ends. Guys like uh, Colby Parkinson, Josh Wiley, Brenton Strange. Here you got a legit guy who's been balling in John New Smith. Uh, he's caught 15 out of uh, 18 targets for 188 and three TDs in his last two games. He's suddenly a very serious weapon down here in Miami, uh, a team that's been far less explosive than they were last year. He's had 45 or more receiving yards in six of his last seven games. If you're looking for a good prop, pound some of those John New Smith over receiving props for uh, a Thursday night. And one, yeah, one other I, thing, I, I like the prop too. Uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Christian Watson, uh, and correlate that with the over in this game. Packers probably going to be without Jair Alexander, their their top corner. Yep. He was out against the 49ers. That's good news for uh, for the uh, Dolphins receivers and John U. Smith. But uh, also, again, if, if if the weather's good, 48, I think it's it's attainable. And I think Jordan Love mm -hmm. is going to give Christian Watson. A couple more opportunities to make plays downfield. He got everybody else involved right before the half against San Francisco. He, he gave uh, Watson two deep balls, one that Watson should have come down with in his sleep. Uh, and Watson healthy again. Obviously, hamstrings has been have been an issue for him uh, anytime that he's not productive. Look, if he if they get him up to speed, that's uh, that's a lot of receivers uh, that you can count on if you're Green Bay and Jordan Love. You know, one thing I wanted to mention about. Uh, uh, if, if you're interested in these kind of things with point spread situations uh, based on this year, teams coming off a game in which they covered as a home favorite, which is the case for Miami, and then they're on the road, very strong this year. A total of 21, 9, and 1. 12 and 6 is favored, but 9, 3, and 1 as an underdog. So that would point to Miami. But I would certainly mitigate that with the weather situations uh, that, uh, that are likely to be encountered. 